Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for attending this talk after this journey of hands-on workshops and uh, all these talks. So we'll be talking, Olivia and me, about using the new web APIs for foldable devices, this shiny new uh, multi-screen foldable devices, laptops also, uh, that we now have and we can use with the web. So who are we? My name is Johan, and I work as a developer advocate at Microsoft. And this is... Uh, and my name is Olivier, and I work as a developer advocate for AWS. So first, before starting, uh, I will tell you a bit of a story. So once upon a time, more than 20 years ago, this was the web, basically only desktop massive devices. So maybe some of you uh, who are a bit older like me remember when it was the time. Then, a few years later, came new devices. Uh, we had laptops, smartphones, uh, also tablets, new form factors that we had to adapt our application to. And at some point, someone had an idea. It was around uh, 2010 uh, that someone said that, hey, uh, maybe we should stop developing multiple applications, like one for the desktop version, one for the smartphone version, and we should only make one application that is responsive. And that's how responsive web design was born. But still, something wasn't right at the time, because uh, especially if you were using frameworks like Bootstrap at the time, that was like the most popular CSS framework, everything was developed first for like the bigger screen, uh, the desktop version, and then uh, we adapted like the design to try to fit and forcefully fit that uh, on the smaller small, uh, form factors, and that was not really uh, optimized because like the smaller device that has the least power in the end was executing the most of the code, so it wasn't really efficient. And it wasn't really good also from a UX perspective. And someone else had another idea. We should first work on the mobile version and then do the enhancements uh, for those bigger form factors after that. So that's how uh, mobile first web design was born too. And then came another set of new devices. Not really this one, but who in this room uh, knows what this device is? A few one. So this one's not really new uh, because it came out in uh, 1982. I wasn't even born <laughs> at <Me> the <laughs> time. Uh, it's a Game & Watch, and I put it uh, there in this introduction because that's the first reference of uh, mainstream dual screen devices that's also portable uh, that was released. So it was made by Nintendo, it was like a video game system. So this one is older than the web, to be honest. A few years later, in 2004, came the Nintendo DS. It's still pre, uh, it's pre mobile web because it came out uh, like a few years before responsive design and even like modern smartphones were created. But it was still interesting because it's still uh, mainstream, dual screen, but also include a touch screen. And uh, finally, we had another iteration. Still, it's the Nintendo 3DS. You can see the pattern here. And it's interesting because uh, it came at the same year responsive web design was invented in 2010. And it was the first dual screen uh, um, mainstream device that included a touch screen, but also a web browser. So we're starting uh, to see a pattern and see something similar. Did you browse the web on this device? <laughs> I tried, <laughs> actually. And then, 10 years later, in 2020, you can see similarity in the form factor, uh, came new sets of devices like the Surface Duo and many more that came uh, at the same time, like the, the Galaxy Fold and like uh, this shiny new laptop that was recently released uh, by Asus. So, now where to begin uh, if we have a web application and you want to take advantage from a user experience perspective of these new form factors and design. What if it's not just uh, another responsive design target? We made our application uh, adapt to different form factors. And what if it just was another form factors for our application? 
So yeah, instead of reinventing everything, so why not using what we know, which is responsive design? So when we talk about responsive design, what's the first thing you think about? Something? Okay, we'll see. First, uh, before I start, uh, just a disclaimer, what we're going to show you is highly experimental, it's getting less and less. Um, it's still a draft, so it's not uh, an API that is um, finalized. Um, so yeah, be careful if you implement it, just don't put it in production. Uh, the, f the last version of the draft has been around for eight months now. Hasn't changed for eight months, so it's pretty, pretty cool, but still, it's highly experimental. So when we talk about responsive design, the first thing that we think about is uh, media queries. And for these new form factors, there's two new media queries that, um, have, that um, have been created, which are named horizontal viewport segment, which is the number of uh, segments we have on the horizontal um, axis, so the X. And vertical viewport segment, which is the number of screen you have on the vertical one. So maybe, like basically this one is two horizontal, one vertical. When I flip it, it's like one horizontal and two vertical. So there is media queries. So on the left, you can see it's two horizontal uh, segments and one vertical. And on the right, it's uh, one horizontal and two vertical. So this media query matches these devices. And we talk about segments and not screen because you have some devices like the uh, Samsung Galaxy Fold. It's just one screen that folds, but there's still two uh, segments. And we'll see also that segments are not always equal to the size of the screen. So the one of the main goal of this API is because you know when there's new APIs created for the web, one of the first rule is that we shouldn't break the, the web. And you can't go back. Once an API is released, you can't go back and say, and say let's change it, because there's a lot of websites that are using it, and you can break these websites. So the last iteration of the APIs is like that, because it uh, allows you to think about what co can come next in the web. So having this, if we have this media query saying we have horizontal viewport segment 2, this is this factor. But also, you can have this, this media query and the vertical segment viewport 2. So at some point in the future, we may have these kind of devices. Don't ask me how you can fold that and put it in your pocket. But this is possible in the future, and we already think about the potential future usage when you design the API. So let's play a game just to make sure you understand everything. So if I have this um, media query, horizontal viewport segment 2, with the background yellow, which one is going to be yellow? One, two, three, four, or five? Anyone? Yes, four, 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 yeah, perfect. This one is the one who is going to be uh, with a yellow background. So pretty easy. Also, um, because we have different viewports, you may want to know, uh, to have more information about this viewport. And we have some CSS uh, environment variable. I don't know if you use these. They're not that common, even though we see them more and more. But we have all these. So basically, for every viewport, you can have the width, the height, the uh, information about the, um, the coordinate of the top, left, bottom, and right. And basically, your viewports are like a ma matrix. So top left is 0, 0, then it's 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So basically, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. You get it? It's a, it's a matrix. And it's very useful when you want to target just one particular screen. So that's for CSS, so you know how to do media queries. But sometimes, you may want to also um, manipulate your DOM uh, using JavaScript. So there's an API for that. On the viewport object in the, in the window.viewport, there's the segment uh, object now. And if you just have one screen, so let's say I have this device, and so when I open it, so I have one screen which is black, so it like, doesn't exist. So I have one screen. That returns null. It's the same if I have that, like a normal smartphone. So it returns null. But if there is like more than one um, viewport, then you have an array of uh, DOM right there, which is uh, sent back to you. And then you can do a lot of things. You can iterate. And for each one of them, you can have the same information, the width, the height, top, bottom, and etc. So you can access also your screen from uh, the JavaScript side. We put the link to the documentation if you want to have a look. We'll share the screen, the the slides after on on Twitter. Okay, uh, just one thing because I mentioned earlier that screen is not a viewport because um, here, for example, you can see two viewports even though the two screens have the same size, 
just take into account that the browser has a URL bar at the, at the top. So the viewport A is smaller than the viewport B. So don't assume that I have the size of the viewport, or the screen have the same size, or the viewport have the same size. It's not the case. So yeah, something is also that can be interesting, especially uh, when we start having uh, foldable devices, is that it can take uh, different form of posture. Maybe Olivier, you can illustrate uh, while I present them. Basically, uh, we thought of different way we could use uh, our foldable devices. If you put it flat, it's like the same as if you have like just one bigger device like a tablet. But sometimes uh, you may want to adapt uh, your UI when the device is starting to fold, like for example, if he's folded in two, it starts to look like a bit like when you have a laptop. So you might want to have a different UI, for example, put a keyboard on the bottom screen and something interesting on the top screen. If you start uh, folding it fully, you can have like two different screens. Uh, you can display uh, two things uh, separately on every side, for example, to make a game of battleship or anything you can imagine. If you fold it completely, it might be like a tablet. And basically, you have uh, on your hand, just one screen is active, and maybe you can switch from one to the other. Or you can just hold it like a book. Again, it's just few ideas to like project uh, yourself in the future and think of new use case and what you can do, basically, with your application to match the different posture uh, you, your user might be having uh, with their own foldable devices. So there's an API for that, uh, basically. It's a bit like uh, when you're doing responsive design, like the screen size is not fixed, uh, it might be fluid, uh, and you have uh, uh, at some point a breakpoint when you switch from one posture to the other one. Basically, it's based on the uh, fold angle. So. Uh, we have different angles, it can be specified for each device, and you have an API to query uh, which current posture uh, your device is folded or not folded on. So you have an event, you can listen to this event, and then you can uh, use the navigator.deviceposture API to query which kind of posture your application is using. And you might wonder, why is it really useful? Okay, it's an API, we can imagine some use case. Just a simple uh, use case. Of course, you have also uh, media queries to uh, adapt your CSS to uh, this posture. And I'll take just a really simple, straightforward use case. For example, you have just uh, your regular call uh, application. You're calling someone, and uh, it's a video call, so you want to see, uh, use the maximum of your screen space that you are having to see the person you're calling, and reduce maybe uh, like the, um, the UI to a minimum. But once you start folding uh, your screen, you may not want like to not see maybe the bottom of the person or have the, the, you know, the face of your color like split in two or maybe folded. So you want just to readjust uh, your UI to only use um, the face of your color on the top screen and then expand the UI on the bottom screen, depending of, again on, of the device posture. So that's just one really simple use case on where, uh, when having such an API might be useful. And now it's time for demos. So maybe we can switch to yes. the video. So this one uh, is a Surface Duo uh, device. It's an older one, but still it's working for demo. So this is just a, a simple web application. I don't know if you can read the text, but basically it's saying that now I have the browser just on the left uh, part of the screen. So this is the browser window. I'm only using like half the screen and it can be detected as you can see in the bottom, uh, this application is running on a single screen setup. Once uh, using the UI, I expand the browser window to two screens. So you can detect that the application is running on two screens just using uh, the media queries Olivier showed earlier. And we can also see the orientation because like the media queries, as you said, are different. If I try to switch the orientation, again, it still says we are on two screen and you can see that the matching uh, orientation has changed all with CSS. So this is just a simple demo to showcase uh, what you can do using this API. Also what is interesting on this demo is that the screen on the right doesn't go automatically um, at the bottom when you flip the device. You can choose to rearrange the screen when you want. Another 
demonstration some to, uh, to showcase just a simple application. So this one is just a photo gallery. If I select a picture, it goes full screen and I can navigate from one picture to the others. So this is in just re your regular single screen mode. Once I switch to having multiple screen segments, I can have one screen for the UI and the other one to display the full size of the picture. And if I switch the orientation, that's why also uh, I can choose which of the screen will go up and which uh, of the screens will go down. And it's usually better to have the bottom screens uh, used for the user interaction. Like on the uh, Nintendo. Like on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, not Switch, but <laughs> DS, the older device. Okay, now let's go to some uh, code. I won't be developing the full demo uh, Johan showed. But so I have this, um, this application somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, I have a basic application. So if you go on the dev tool, so this is Chrome, but it also works, also works on Edge. So if you go on the dev tool, you now have this uh, responsive de uh, devices uh, list, and you have the Surface Duo and Galaxy Fold here. If you don't see them, that may happen. You go on the settings in experiment, and you have this emulation support dual screen mode. So you will see them appearing, but normally it's by default now. So my application is very, very basic. Okay, I'm getting lost in my tabs. Very basic, so I have like four boxes, blue, yellow, pink, green, and each one of them is just like 100 pixel by 100 pixel and has a different background color as you saw. So very basic application, not like a photo gallery. So what I want to do is, um, <laughs> getting lost in, what I want to do is have a uh, different uh, you know, UI depending on if the device is open, if it's closed, if it's uh, um, flipped, if it's open uh, flip-wise. So I want to have different um, uh, UI for that. And you can see that for the moment it's all the same. So what I will do is that I will go to my CSS. And as we showed earlier, we have this uh, media query. So I have this horizontal viewport segment too, which means when, I, when it's opened on the horizontal um, axe, I can then have, let's say, I want my blue, you can see perfect. I want my blue box to be in position absolute top zero, so stick to the top. But I want the left to be uh, the size of the first screen. So zero, zero is the first screen, top left. I take the, um, the environmental variable, so viewport segment width, so the width, minus 100 pixel because I want the box to be on the first screen. So if I save that, you can see, you can see it also on the device. That wasn't what I wanted to show you. But you can see that the blue box is here now. If I don't put minus 100 pixel, what you will see is that you may expect the blue box to be on the second screen. That's what you may think, but actually it's beneath the fold. So you need to take into account that on some devices like this one, there is a fold in the middle and you ha can have some content hidden beneath it. So, yeah, I can do the same for, uh, let's say, the pink one. So the pink one, I want it to be the width of the uh, first screen, uh, left, bottom, zero, absolute. And now you have, <laughs> you have two demo at a time. You have the pink box here. I can do the same for all of them. So uh, let's say the green one, the green one is basically, um, the, I'm using the left, um, the, the, the left of the second, segment. It makes more sense when you, when you see the demo. So that's what you get. The green is here now. And the last one, I have the yellow one. Uh, yellow one is a bit more tricky because there's the, I changed the width and the left. And so the yellow one is here. So top to the, to the right screen. But if I, if I switch it, I flip the device, then I go back to the first media, first non media query thing because it's only for the horizontal viewport segment too. So you can have another one, which I won't write entirely, but so let's say you have this one and I also put everything for all the boxes. So now if I flip my device and I have some glitch here, if I flip my device and you can see that the CSS is, okay, it was zooming. Uh, the CSS is different uh, when, I, when I flip it. So, okay, <laughs> whatever happened. And, and you can you can also, also open or close the device like that. So you have different uh, media queries happening. So now if I go on the JavaScript side, so we showed you that you can have um, 
the resize event. So if I just listen to the resize event and I go here, uh, if I open, close, you can see I have resize on the console on the right. Uh, that is here. If I flip it, also it happens. Oh, I have this glitch, whatever. And so what I want to do is say, let's say I want to um, print other segments. So I just have a function that prints other segments, which I will call every time it resizes. I will also call it when the page is loaded. And so what it does is that it takes all the, the viewports and it just uh, displays them. Console on table, if you don't know what it does, in Chrome, it displays as a table when you have a lot of JSON, which is uh, formatted the same way. So here you can see that I have two, um, two viewports. If I have just one phone or it's folded, then you have null, which we showed earlier. So I can open it, flip it, and, and it works. Also, I, I can show you uh, directly on the device. So if I go here on the device, so I have it opened, I can inspect it. So here what you see is the device. So if I go on the left, you can see on the left. If I open it here, uh, I put it on two screens. So you can see that I have the array here. If I flip it, you can see that I have the other array. So that's when you see that the two viewports don't have the same height. One is 464, the other one is 488, because I have the URL bar um, at the top here. So the two viewports don't have the same size. And that's it for the demo. And I hand it back to you. OK, so now, how can you? set up uh, your development box to try these new APIs, even if you don't have like a foldable device to, to test your design. So thankfully, uh, Olivier showed us like a preview of that. You can emulate foldable devices now in your browser, either using your latest Chrome or Edge or any basically Chromium-based uh, browser. But you have to go into the dev tools and emulate a uh, ticker box in the experiments tab, because it's still, uh, as we said in the introduction, very experimental. You have to tick the box to uh, emulate the support for dual screen mode. That's what will give you like the option to split your screen in two and see the differences. You also go to have uh, to, emu uh, to enable it in the device emulation tab. Once it's done, you can basically test it in your browser. But sometimes it's not enough. Uh, to be honest, the first version of this talk when we tried to write the demos, it was working fine in the browser. But as soon as we tried on the real devices, there were some differences. Uh, because at the time, it was still a draft. And uh, the API being experimental, some things were implemented differently. And you can also have the option to uh, like set up a real uh, emulator. So this will set up uh, an emulator for uh, the Android version that's specifically made for this device. So using that, you can even emulate some things like the posture. You can set up the angles and see uh, how it behaves. And you can basically have exactly the same system as if you were using a real device. So you're sure that uh, your design will work the same during like your dev tools in Chrome uh, and on a real device. So if you plan to play a bit with that, uh, I highly recommend it that you use uh, I, either uh, emulator available to test just like uh, if it was on a real device. And then uh, we thought about something that uh, Olivier, your demo, I think was really nice. But to be honest, uh, I hate writing CSS code. I don't know about you. Uh, who likes to write CSS code in there? I do. <laughs> Uh, I see also a lot of hands not raised. <laughs> so that means maybe uh, I'm also a bit right. Uh, more importantly, most often when we are writing like an application for enterprise or your own application, you will be using components or any frameworks that will make your life easier, not having like to write every line of CSS for your whole design. And I wanted to experiment a bit about that to think about what could be like uh, our next generation frameworks to make writing, uh, adapting at least our designs for foldable devices uh, like this one, a bit simpler than just writing everything by hand, uh, having to write all the CSS and stuff. And sorry, that's not what was planned. And I kind of, tr uh, I tried to create uh, an Angular library. So I had a colleague also write something for React, if that's what you prefer. And I tried to make some components so you don't even have to write CSS 
to adapt your existing application to uh, foldable devices. So it's specific Angular code, but basically what it's doing, it provides you components. So you just have to update the template part of your application to say which part of your application should be always displayed when you are in a single screen mode, which part should go on the second screen, and basically uh, if you want to flip or not the screen depending on the orientation. And that's exactly what I used when we showed earlier the demo of the gallery application, or the just simple demo uh, to detect everything. I basically used that library. So if you're interested to dive a bit into that, uh, you will have the, the link at the end, but I uh, made a simple exercise. I took an existing demo. I didn't fully write uh, the gallery demonstration uh, I showed earlier. It was uh, written, I think, by someone at Intel. And the original demonstration was just using plain uh, CSS and JavaScript. I, I made a version of that application just using Angular without touching anything of the CSS code. So there's a, a repository you can have to see what looks like the application when uh, it would be like Olivier writing all the CSS stuff. And then I migrated the application to use the library and that basically removed all the specific CSS code to manage foldable devices. So you can see the difference. Uh, I'm not sure we may have all the, the time to see that, but just to give you an idea, this application uses five components. So this is uh, what the code looks like with the pure CSS version. We have like the gallery component, that's uh, where we showed the full gallery when you can select a picture. There was a component just to act as a placeholder uh, to avoid displaying something behind the fold, uh, as on this particular devices, there's a portion of the screen when you can't put any content. And we have two different components, uh, only one will be shown at a time, either the details one that will be displayed when you're in a dual screen mode, so it will be showing the image in full screen, or the full screen component that will uh, just be shown uh, on top of the usual gallery view. So if I just put, try to navigate between the components, you will see a lot of things like this, like with the media queries uh, Olivier was talking about earlier. And then if we switch to a different branch, the main one, you, will, you can see the difference. It's basically the exact same application, but using the, the library uh, I tried to create to imagine what uh, it could look like. So if I open the exact same component I just shown you, uh, how can I zoom? Okay, so we have one less component, we have just a big component that's called, that uses this directive called split layout. Basically, it tells that we want a split design when uh, we detect that we are in a multiple screen mode. And you can say uh, which kind of CSS flavor you want to use to implement that to better fit your device. And the reverse is just telling the components to basically, uh, when you s uh, move from uh, an horizontal orientation to a vertical one, which screen should be put at the bottom. And then we just have the components uh, we were using earlier. We have no need for the fold placeholder component because everything will be handled this way. What we only have to, to specify is uh, I want the gallery to be uh, displayed in all case and it will be attached to the first screen segments in case we in, in fold them on using like specifying the window to the first segment. As same for the details, I'm specifying it to be attached to the second uh, screen segment, and I only want it to be displayed if I detect that we are in multiple uh, screen mode. As the opposite, I want the full screen components to be only displayed where we are in a single screen mode. And that's basically it. If you look at all the CSS, it was removed in all the components, that's all you have to do to implement that uh, using a library that might that might be in your regular uh, CSS framework a few years from now. No media query anymore. That, that would be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we're done. And we are done with that. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we hope you liked it. If you want to, we don't have time for questions, but if you have any questions, we'll be um, at the exit if we want to have a look at the devices. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank Have you, I'll see you.